For a while now, they've been making wireless keyboards. And for even longer, they've been making mechanical keyboards. But only recently have they started making this. The Rapu KX, a wireless mechanical keyboard. If you haven't noticed already, the KX was made with compact and good looking in mind. But unfortunately, that's where most of the pros stop. The KX measures 13 inches in length. For comparison, it's about half as long as my usual daily keyboard, the X6 Sidewinder, albeit without the numpad. The KX uses a 10 keyless design, which helps it achieve such a small footprint. On top of the plastic construction is an aluminium plate, which surrounds the black keys. The keys used are kale yellow switches, which we'll come back to in just a moment. If black keys aren't your colour, Rapu have you sorted. They've got four other colours to choose from, with white, blue, red and yellow. Other than that aluminium plate, the keyboard is housed in a grippy black plastic. It gives the keyboard a pretty rugged design for travelling. For connectivity, Rapu gave you the choice of using wireless at 5GHz or a wired connection via USB, which is pretty cool. Embedded at the back of the KX is where you can wire up the keyboard, store the small wireless dongle, or turn the keyboard on or off. When turning the keyboard on, it'll vibrate to let you know it's come to life. The capacitive keys up top will also vibrate when used. Ugh, oh, about the capacitive keys. They're probably the most frustrating thing about this keyboard. They didn't register multiple taps in quick succession, and they're awkward to reach from a comfortable typing position. But they look okay, I guess. As with most things about this keyboard, it seems to be more about the looks. Holding the function button will change the colour from white to blue, and unfortunately that's all the colour modding you'll get to do with the capacitive keys. Although you can use Rapu's application to change some of the alternate functions. To top it all off, the KX features variable backlighting, with three modes including off. It is worth noting that only the physical keys are adjustable. And I have to ask why they allowed a keyboard to be released with such poor backlight consistency. It's far from even. Right, so the KX is lightweight, it looks pretty good, and it's a very compact keyboard. But how does it fare when it comes to gaming, disc usage, or even using it for prolonged periods of time? Yeah, nah. This is where things start to fall apart. Starting with the most important is the keys themselves. They are broader than a standard keyboard by a few millimetres, and in real world usage, this translates to a whack load of misclicks, double key mashes, and double tapping the same keys. For someone who touch types and has a muscle memory for a normal keyboard, you're going to find this really frustrating. This could change over time though if you're willing to become more familiar with the keyboard. The keys use linear kale yellow switches, as previously mentioned. They're somewhere in between cherry blacks and reds, and they're smooth. They're really smooth. Almost too smooth. This reflected in my gaming experience with the keyboard as well. Add in my frustration with the capacitive keys and you realise Rapu did not make this keyboard for gaming. And lastly, we've got the battery. Oh boy. I don't know if it's just the KX I'm using, but I find I needed to recharge the keyboard after just two days. Okay, change the batteries in the keyboard? Well, I would, if they were not non-removable. Unless you're solely looking for a portable mechanical keyboard that's got a thick and smooth feel to it, then the KX probably isn't for you. If you're looking for mechanical keyboard performance, ease of use and functionality, it might pay to look elsewhere. If you guys like this video and you want to see more like it, be sure to hit the subscribe button that I'll link just here. Or alternatively, you can hit the subscribe button just below this video. If you guys have any recommendations or ideas for future content, I'm keen to hear what they are. You can post them in the comment section just below and I'll check them out. Thanks for watching guys, this has been Tim O'Neill.